I joined the Glee Club because I had a family friend who actually reached out to me. He had already graduated. Um, he was a couple years older. And he had said, hey, have you heard of this thing called the Men's Glee Club? And I, I hadn't really heard anything about it. Um, and he was like, okay, you have to, you have to audition for it. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change your college experience. After I accepted my offer from Michigan, I found out that they had this like really famous men's glee club, this fa really famous men's chorus. I was like, I, I got to try this out. Uh, so I auditioned, and as soon, about five minutes into my first rehearsal, uh, I knew I was staying. Honestly, I just got an email saying we're the men's glee club, join. And I was very interested in singing, and I just wanted to do something. I actually joined glee club on a whim. Uh, I decided the day of, probably about two hours before I auditioned. Because Fish with BB, as we all know, shout out Fish, um, texted me the day of like the, uh, uh, what was it, the, uh, the mass meeting, yeah. And he was like, yo, come see what we do. Love to have you audition. And that night I auditioned and then I was in the Glee Club. And then from then on, it's just, that's history. And never looked back since. But I mean, no regrets. and been a great one of the best choices I think I made in college. I joined the Glee Club actually uh, sort of on a, from the random email that they send out to all the email accounts I guess and I saw it and I've been looking at a bunch of other clubs to possibly join and Glee Club was one of the only ones that had something in person. I ignored everything else. I saw in person Sunday and Thursday and I was like oh okay. Being able to come to that first you know open meeting that the Glee Club had. I was like, ah, you know, I'll join these guys, probably meet some friends. And then they sang. And I was like, I gotta call my mom, tell her I'm not gonna make it. They're too good. There's no way I'm gonna be able to get in this group. And I went and got a piece of pizza and I just sit there, I was like, dang, I gotta find another choir. And then thankfully I auditioned and I made it. In my sophomore year in high school, we did, my my choir director took us to MVAD, uh, and, which is the Male Vocal Arts Day, right? Um, and we came and we sang with the, with the Glee Club and um, Eugene Rogers, and we sang in the Pendleton Room in the Michigan Union. And I remember being there and I remember singing with, um, with all these guys, and um, it was such a different experience than I had with choir in high school. I just felt more like community and more like family. And when I was coming here, I had no friends, because all my friends went to Michigan State. So I said, I need friends and I'd like to sing. And yeah, and then I said, okay, I'm gonna go try out for the Glee Club. The first rehearsal I remember, we sang loudest. That was first time with Professor Stover. And just after listening to that sound of, you know, four parts coming together, that was something I'd never listened to before. Um, that's why I stayed. So loudest has been a part of the Glee Club as the, the song that we used to open every concert for decades and decades. This is a song that is just at the heart of the experience of being a clubber. It's, it's getting that E flat pitch when you're waiting in line outside in the cold when it's raining in, and you're, you've got butterflies and you're so excited and you're so nervous and there's all the adrenaline rushing because you're about to walk onto the Hill Auditorium stage. That is the power of loudest and what it means.
so much of what people enjoy in in this club involves being physically with people. I mean, it's it really it's sort of the reason that we're here in the first place. I mean, singing is an extension of bodily life. It's a physical thing you do, and sound is a physical thing that that carries to other people. Uh, it's very very intimately tied up with with our yeah our our bodily lives and the, and the bodily presence of other people. You're, you're creating music with people you have all this intimacy with, with these people that you have all this um, this 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 history with, to the point where where you're talking to each other while you're making music, even without really talking to each other, just because just because you're in the same room with each other, because you've learned your cues, you've learned um, just how to be around each other. A lot of the music was structured in a way that, that the whole choir was moving together rhythmically and, and that the harmony was built around voices together, not voices separated. The kind of music that we bring, it needs some sort of in-person rehearsal. Uh, it, the whole point of it working is because there's so many people singing different things. Uh, you trust uh, on your brothers to sing their parts and make it sound good and make you feel as if what you're singing is actually correct. To me, that, that shared heartbeat, that shared breath, that kind of just the basic stuff of like life is what we, we experience on a, on a magnified and, and, and combined level in a really, really, you know, jazz choral rehearsal. The overall mood and feeling of a glee rehearsal, definitely a combination of things. I would say there's some excitement. Um, people love being in those rehearsals. Um, there's also some some drive. Um, you know, when when we're rehearsing, we're we're getting down to work. We don't like to mess around a lot. I mean, we like to be silly. Don't get me wrong, but um, you know, when we're going, we're going. It feels very casual, but yet uh, serious when you when you're trying to sing. Uh, I feel like when when we're in the middle of singing, everyone's so focused. Everyone has the same goal of learning as much as we can within that short time frame and improve themselves as much as possible because we have to prepare a two hour concert within what, 10, 12 weeks. It's very different than like a normal choir rehearsal. You know, you're, you're, you're singing and you're practicing your music, but you're also kind of in on this joke. <laughs> like there are so many little things that, that happen in Glee Club. And it was fun to hear the Glee Club's tone change significantly when they would move from the cloths of heaven to a drinking song. Uh, you could feel them in the upstairs room at Cottage Inn, you know, on a Thursday night with a slice of pizza in their hand. Tour is, in a lot of ways, and I think you would hear a lot of people say this, is like the quintessential Glee Club experience. It's sort of the, the distillation of everything that we love about Glee Club. That's where a lot of clubbers will um, make some of their most uh, meaningful friendships that they get out of club. That's where maybe they create new ones that they didn't even know were there before, but also expand upon the friends uh, and the friendships that they have that were already existing. You're in very close quarters. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you go through homestays, uh, many of which are great experiences, some of which are less than great, but even those can make for wonderful stories. And to share that experience with, with all these guys that I just started to become friends with. And then the proximity of just being in the bus, like going, like staying in hotel rooms with everybody, playing 
like games and uh, uh, board games like on, on hotel beds and things like that. I've said in the past that t tours are the places, are the time when people's uh, wedding invitation lists really get made. Um, it's, it's when you resolve that your, your wedding list, your wedding invitation list is growing by a really, really alarming number of names. What they, what they want, what they're here for, they're here for that camaraderie and all of that culminating into one giant um, trip at the end where you're with all your buddies, you're all singing your best music and having just so much fun. The club is very powerful in offering a lot of different types of community depending on who you are. If you love sports, you can go play I Am Sports with the guys. You can go watch the games in the Glee Club student section. We have a little place at the football games where all the Glee Club guys go. If you like playing D&D, &D, you can go play D&D. &D. And, the th and the things we do together are the kinds of things that um, I think really create a kind of understanding between people that you don't really get from a lot of other activities. I think there's you know a lot of individual communities that people can find their home, and that's a really awesome part of Glee Club. When I was young, all the way until I graduated high school, I had very little male friends, very, very few of them. I was never good at it. Um, I, I also had very few gay friends, you know? Um, I, I had very few chances to, to make friends with, with men. And that's really what the club has given me, just through being, um, just through being in it. And so no matter what part of the, the little communities you're in, they all are sort of just tied together by the string of, of music and, and performing at a, such an incredible level. And you see that every Hill concert when it's some of the most beautiful music in the world has ever made. You know, we're, we're in our shining days. It's, Though you are in your shining days uh, is how, the, how the, the text begins and, and the piece is just declamatory and has this really um, beautiful contrasts of, of full sound and then very sensitive, very nuanced singing. Um, which is part of, I think, what makes the, the, the piece so compelling. It's been a little frustrating for me personally because I want to be able to be like, yo, let's let's do this fun event and have everyone come and like just just have a good time because that's what people are lacking so much right now. Yeah, one of the big relationships that has suffered because of the pandemic is probably Kevin Yan. Uh, he's in the fryer with me and I absolutely love that dude. We'd go to Ugly together. We'd see each other four times a week at Glee Club and Friars rehearsal. He's in my grade. We're both doing CS. For me, I realized like, we are, are, are good friends and we're building a relationship because we're together so much and because we have so many similar interests. But a lot of that stuff is, is hurt by the pandemic and we can't go to the ugly and study. We can't go to Friars or Glee Club rehearsal. And so I think that all those things that we really bonded over, you can't do together anymore. 
So you mentioned you mentioned winter tour or tour that we were supposed to go on. Uh, you gonna ask me about that? I am gonna uh, ask you about that. Sorry, buddy. Mm -mm. Uh, the guarantee in League Club is that if you stay in four years, you will get an international tour, and that uh, we had to sort of break that compact with people. Um, we were supposed to go to, um, I think we were, st we were starting in Buenos Aires and then we were going to go to Cordoba in, in Argentina. Then we we're going to drive, we were going to fly, I think. We were going to fly to Chile, um, uh, in Santiago de Chile. And then from there we were going to go to Lima. And then from Lima we were going to go to Machu Picchu through oof, that town in the mountains, I can never remember. Um, oh God. I think it was sometime around evening just before dinner so once I got the email I think the rest of my evening just I just felt disconnected with everything I just uh, just the fact that we had been preparing uh, to present a concert in three different countries in South America uh, everything just went away the 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 grieving that was instantaneous for us all to have to confront and wrestle with. It was, uh, it was devastating to have to put a pause on all of that activity that we were so ready for and so looking forward to. You know, oh, and the food, oh, the food, how we would have eaten, oh, God. It was the middle of the night and I was just like laying in my bed watching uh, street food Latin America. It's like a Netflix show where they just like do little uh, uh, biopics on these different like restaurants and and um, and street vendors in Latin America. And the first episode is in Buenos Aires. And there's these the this um, these two women, this couple. They own a stand in this market, and they make these giant stuffed tortillas uh, of like eggs and cheese and all this all this um, all these vegetables and meat. And then they just show them like cutting huge things of meat. And I was like, I saw it. And then immediately, that was the moment that I really, that I like internalized I wasn't going because I started crying. I cried so hard. I was so sad. <laughs> just, I don't, uh, yeah. I remember so vividly being kind of in the sweet spot of the semester where we were, we were really, hitting on all cylinders and and just about to hit the peak of the semester which was going to be quite quite a crescendo uh as we were we were imminently to perform at at a major conference we were imminently to uh perform a pre-hill concert we were imminently to perform our hill concert and and we were imminently on our way to a trip of a lifetime through South America, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. And the, the, the clubbers were working so hard. The repertoire was starting to lock. There was just this momentum building that was, was palpable. And we were focused. We were so focused. And I'll, I'll never forget what that felt like. And then the shock of what it felt like to have all of it just vaporize. I think it's hard to pinpoint an exact thing and say because of COVID, X happened or X was affected as much as everything about being a student just feels different. Um, with the pandemic and everything going to Zoom, it's really killed my motivation. Like It's really hard just to wake up stay in your room the whole day, stay on your computer, and basically do the same things over and over again because there's no change of scenery. Like, it's just all, I'm looking at a window for everything, you know? I, I don't feel like I'm really going to class or really learning anything as much as I'm just like watching a video. And when you have a whole day of just, okay, you need to watch this video, and then when you're done, you need to watch another video. And then when you're done with that video, you need to watch a third video. It just, it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel that exciting nature. Um, and so I think it's really hard to focus on things. It's really hard to, um, to feel like I'm actually substantially learning anything as much as just like it's going in one ear and out the other ear. In a normal year, a, a member of the Glee Club will rehearse three and a half to four hours a week in person in this very room. 
and that's throughout the entire semester. In pandemic life, in the winter term, for example, if you opted to be an in-person clubber, you had one 40-minute rehearsal a week. And between the start of our rehearsal period to our unofficial break, which happened in the first week of March, you would have about four hours of total time in person. The first semester, um, and then for the first part of this semester, we were 12 feet apart, um, which is a very long way, <laughs> very long way apart, um, always in masks. Um, and then students have to be tested every week for, for, for COVID. We have been authorized to hold some uh, in-person rehearsals in limited numbers. So uh, we, have a, we have cycling groups. I was on like the behind the scenes aspect of that where I went in with the ops team, Dang Yang and Patrick Lovelace. Um, and we would go to the auditoriums and be like, okay, this is, we had a tape measure. Patrick had this little tape measure. We'd measure out 12 feet. Um, and space everything out and be like, okay, how many people can we fit in this? Our in-person rehearsals are definitely quieter. Um, we're, we're pretty silly, as I said, we're pretty rowdy. And you know, when there's a hundred people, there's so much sound that's brought to the table. Um, when there's 18-ish people spread out 12 feet between each singer, each singer wearing a mask, um, it's really quiet. Singing with a mask on is quite difficult, I would say. Uh, it's just breathing in. Uh, it, the mask sticks on your face and it's it's kind of not the best situation. We make it very clear to everyone um, don't ag don't like congregate in the hallways um, like keep your distance keep your mask on. We still cannot really interact with each other uh, so it feels difficult to you know uh, learn from your surroundings and you know figure out how I can improve myself compared to other people around me so that we can all bring out our best. We've made the expectations very clear for everyone on how to deal with COVID effectively, um, which I think is what we should be doing. Um, it is just kind of a bummer overall. But it's better than being on Zoom all the time. Um, it's, it is, it's a huge step up. Uh, learning how to run a rehearsal on Zoom where everybody is singing in their own rooms. Um, everybody doesn't have any sense of the normal like synergy or l listening for blend or intonation that we normally would, would have. Um, it's normally just a one-way thing. Um, we normally mute ourselves. You don't feel like you're singing with other people as much as there's other people in like another room somewhere, or, like another space and they're singing and you're just kind of like adding on a little bit. So it doesn't feel like that same, you know, community. It's really hard. It's, uh, it's really hard to not be in the same room with everybody. Um, Mostly because it's, it's, it's really difficult to be able to have like those inside jokes that we used to have. You know, it, it's, you know, typing snap into a chat box is not the same as like hearing somebody snapping. And when you're singing, you don't really hear the other people. It feels like you're kind of alone. Like, I don't think I've heard the Glee Club sing in a long time, <laughs> um, just being on Zoom, you know? The repertoire that we sang this term was both practical and purposeful. I say practical because we had so many restrictions placed upon us. Imagine the Glee Club, which typically sings with about 100 guys in this very room, uh, singing with about 20 guys, 12 feet apart, with masks on, and learning new music. It's a drastically restricted way to sing when you're used to being shoulder to shoulder and and having 20 to 25 guys singing your part right around you to help you learn this music. And when suddenly you are on an island and, and masked up and needing to learn how, how to sing a voice part, it's pretty complicated. So the practical was that the music that, that I selected was all music that I felt like would be accessible given the extreme restrictions that we were dealing with. And then I, I really believe that it, it was critical for us that in our, in our repertoire that we used our music as a way to speak into this moment of, of racial justice, the cry for racial justice in 2020 and 2021, that, that we must not just address in word, but we must address through our actions. 
so it was important and I was so grateful for the opportunity to share in this program uh, a spiritual that Maggie Burke, our assistant conductor, so beautifully led, which was sometimes I feel like a motherless child. The text is heartbreaking to think about uh, because how many people were separated from their families and that, that was just regular, I was expected that was a regular thing. Um, but that doesn't make it any less painful every time we hear about it. And you know, you think today about people at borders, you think about people, you know, having to say, having to, to say goodbye to, fa to families in a COVID ward. Um, these, these, these pieces continue to have such resonance um, with, with all of us, um, no matter our, our, anybody who's feeling that sort of separation and pain. It's really good that we talk about diversifying club. I think it's really, really good that we're starting to think about it and talk about it more, more, um, more openly. But there is a wall that, that we hit. Because as much as we talk about it, and as much as we want to, to create a safe space and club for um, for uh, uh, a diverse array of of, of races and, and um, life experiences and sexualities and genders, there's little we can do <laughs> if the university at large is not itself diverse in those ways. Uh, I experienced racism probably at the university around freshman year, but people are still coming in and still learning. There were like some things that people would say, like microaggressions that they didn't really know could be racist or could be offensive. You know, so it was, and then it like kind of puts me in the weird position to like, do I educate? Like, how do I handle that? Because like, I didn't know how to handle that back then as well as I do now. So I'm a really, I, I'm a really, I'm a lot. I know I'm a lot. <laughs> um, I'm a very passionate person and there are things that I, that I care deeply about and I am very explosive about expressing them, right? Um, well, there have been times when I've been in club where um, someone would, where, God, this is hard. Um, there have been times in club where, you know, someone will say something to me about something I've worn or um, a song that I was singing or maybe I, I was a little too loud when I was speaking Spanish or when I was singing a song in Spanish and I was being pushy or something like that. And it's, uh, and that was very, it's very hard for me because I grew up in a family that's very loud and I, I come from cultures that are very expressive and loud and honest. Um, and I remember times where I was excited about something um, and I let that excitement show and then it made me weird. It made me weird in, in, in terms of just the, the, the group that I was with. And I remember feeling like I needed to put that away. When you're a person of color, it's really, really hard to step into spaces where you know you're going to be a minority, where you know that it's gonna be harder, or you know that, that there's gonna be little that reflects you. Um, and because of that, a lot of people at this university, they end up not joining clubs like this, like, like, like the club that is very old and established, um, because they wanna devote all their time to being in spaces that reflect them because they are being in spaces that are specifically for them, you know? Um, and I have certainly felt that way. Um, I felt that way every once in a while.
I stayed in club because the the joy that I got out of it and the fulfillment that I got out of being with everybody outweighed the few times that I did feel that way, you know? And because it's it's not, generally it's not their fault. It's not anybody's fault, you know? It's just because, it's just because the cultures that I, that I, um, am passionate about and that I that I represent that are that make me up you know are not very visible ones and I never felt like anyone actually didn't like me <laughs> just because I spoke Spanish or because I was gay or because I was you know any number of things you know um, it was always just I just wasn't something that they'd seen before I don't think anyone can ever say they're doing enough for a diversity you know um, and I think we're in a like a different type of organization where we have to worry about how's the diversity within our club, how's the diversity in our repertoire of music, how is our diversity in the audience. In that same vein, we've, we're doing a piece, uh, we're doing a, a setting of the, the, the song We Shall Overcome. We were gifted with an extraordinary and generous um, dedication from UZ Brown of Morehouse College who uh, set the TTBB version of his We Shall Overcome for us to join our voice with the great anthem of the civil rights movement that is as much relevant today as it ever has been. With this semester and the previous semester, um, we talked uh, a lot and heavily about uh, racial injustice. Like, um, we had a document filled with stories about police brutality so we could have more like education about that. And Stover is always being very real about the issues that we're experiencing, which I think does a lot. And he'll talk to us a lot on Zoom and in person. And he always has like an open arm. Like he sent me an email over the summer when things were getting really rough with police brutality. I thought that was something that was really special. What makes Stover such a good leader during this time is that he's really honest with us while also being optimistic. Like he doesn't pretend that it's not fun like to be in COVID times and like he's had some really serious talks with us about that. You know I think for me as a as a leader in this moment my my role was to empower the student leadership and and to help them live out their leadership so that that clubbers can really be intentional to take care of one another because the fundamental need that we all had was to know that we had a place to belong and that we were going to be cared well for. How the Glee Club has helped me um, through the struggles that um, have kind of come about because of the pandemic and such, um, I think it mostly was the people that I knew in Glee Club. Um, not so much the aspect of like having rehearsals on Zoom, like that, that's nice and all, and it's nice to sing and hear the music still. I think this isn't a surprise to most clubbers, um, at least, well, new guys, they probably don't know this, but me and Maddie Els is probably my best friend in the Glee Club and one of my best friends just at all. I, my relationship with Ben DeVries was probably my first one in Glee Club. When I joined, we called ourselves the Bass Boys because there are, I think, four of us in that new guy class that were basses. And him and I just kind of grew really close. And it was really cool is that I lived in South Quad, he lived in New Towers. And so every time we'd go to College Inn after rehearsal or we'd go to a party, when we came back, we'd walk along the same path. And there was always a corner where we'd split and go our, our separate ways. And I think there were hours spent at that corner just talking and being, hey, I have time to go. Wait, 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 there's one more thing to say. Kind of my uh, mental health reckoning kind of built up over the fall and it kind of came in uh, in January um, and that's when I that's when I reached out to him and a couple other guys and I was like I'm having I'm having a lot of troubles right now and immediately him and the other guys they were all like man we are we are here for you like we know you are a great dude and it's it's just nice to have that reassurance of like them saying all these nice things about you um, how they believe in you how they have confidence like it's just, it's just tough for everyone. Um, and he, I think it was, was it the same day or the next day after I'd reached out to him? He was like, I got, I got something for you. And whatever day it was, but he came right over and 
grab me. He had a couple beers that he gave me. Um, he made, he got me some, um, some of his uh, dad's uh, homemade spaghetti um, and spaghetti sauce. Um, brought it over for me to have for dinner, um, which is a really small thing, but just means a lot. Um, and just having that, um, just him responding so quickly means means a lot. Um, more than more than people understand, I think. Glee Club has absolutely helped. You know, just being with people. Um, I'm a very social person. Uh, I, I I like studying. I like having alone time. But when it comes down to it, I'm I need I need to meet people. Uh, and it's just nice, you know, even with you know the wide range of ages in the Glee Club. Uh, it's just nice to talk to other people. Um, it's very helpful to just vent through singing, just with covid and you know everything seems so dreadful and dreary and sad you know you're just sort of worried about you know your family your friends yourself um you know everybody to varying degrees but uh yeah def definitely has helped all around with just my mental well-being you know we're getting through it and we're going to get through it uh and those traditions are going to come back in full force and people talk all the time about how, you know, once, once it's safe, we're going to have, you know, a, an absolutely world-ending night at Cottage Inn um, that, you know, may or may not end in several arrests, but... I think something I'm really looking forward to is, like, rehearsing all together again. That's just, there's nothing like it. Walking around Southview at 3 a.m. with Christian Turner doing God knows what. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping to get just a ton of a ton of fun and good memories, because that's, that, that's why I do this. The thing that I would hope to do next year is to share the experience with everybody in the group. That's actually a goal of mine, is that once COVID is over, is to play one game of beer pong with, it, with, with, with someone in Glee Club, with some Glee Clubbers, you know? So that's, that's a goal that I have for um, maybe being able to, to enjoy some, some social life with the Glee Clubbers again. I, I really want to put Glee Club in a place where Everyone has experienced this amazing community and family that I have, and that's going to take a lot of work. Where are we at right now, and how can we get back to where we were, and how can we recognize this opportunity and do some things differently? There are some traditions that we may not want to keep, and there are some traditions that we may want to start that are more positive. And so looking at that type of stuff and, and really thinking about what we can do to get us to a similar level of community that we were and, and, and potentially even better by the end of next year.
we'd uh, basically just like you to watch and react to it. So, okay. Uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Overall, how do you feel Stover's done as a director this semester, and is there anything you'd like to say to him directly? I have, I, I, I do not have enough words uh, for how wonderful he's been. I love Stover. I always have. Yeah, I think Stover did a fantastic job. He always does. Stover is a trooper. <laughs> um, he, I mean, he's just been so inspirational and, and persevered so much. His passion for the club makes me feel like I need to meet the level he's setting. He's the most positive leader I've ever had a chance to interact with and be led by. I think Stover has done a really great job in putting the health and safety of our of the students at the forefront. I mean, obviously I can't say anything but good things about you know how he's done. <laughs> Engaging virtually over um, different means of communication, trying to engage with clubbers who won't even be in person is such a tough challenge. I, he doesn't let us slip. Being around teachers who just instill that passion in you and you can see that drive in them to make you be the best you can be is so, so rewarding and makes you just create so much better than you ever thought you could. I can't imagine going through this, these crazy times of the pandemic without someone like Professor Stover who's such a rock. I love Stover. He is a ray of positivity, always. So I remember being in sophomore year, and I'm a fourth year now, and uh, I, I didn't really know what to do. Uh, I was having a rough time, and I had a friend recommend that uh, I audition for FICA, and he sent me to Stover directly, and I met Stover in his office, and we, uh, we had a nice chat, and he got to know me. And I didn't know, I, I didn't do much singing, uh, but since then, he's just, I didn't quite, it took me a bit longer to get in, but this whole time, he's been, I've just felt like he's rooting for me, and he's just one of the kindest men I've ever met. I really, really admire his ability to lead us not through the aggression that a lot of directors end up having, um, but with just genuinely caring about the club. The club has been uh, a rock for me um, through this past academic year. Um, and that's really, uh, I think, a testament to, um, to Stover's uh, ability to, to, to push forward. I think he did a wonderful job with what he was given. He is always such a positive person. I think he's done a, a really great job. He's like probably one of the best parts about Glee Club. Uh, to Professor Stover, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Stover. And, uh... Hey man, it's been great to be in a glee club with you for the past couple of years now. I remember when you auditioned. <laughs> he was uh, one of the biggest reasons I chose Michigan, honestly, and he is the reason that I chose to audition to glee. Thank you, Stover. Yeah, I can't wait to experience a normal year under his conductor. Uh, for being a director, a mentor. I would just say the one thing that I want to speak on is I think we talk a lot about the glee club and what we get with other people in the group. And I think that we sometimes forget about how important it is and how, how privileged we are to have Professor Stover as our, as our leader. I don't know if I've ever seen that man not be positive this year. He knows how much we all love him, but I would definitely say, Stover, we love you a lot and thank you so much for everything you do. Have, have fun next semester. Uh, and I look forward to the day when I have to call him doctor. You know, the, mo the first thing that comes to my mind is gratitude. Um, and I, I always want the people I lead, and especially the members of the Men's Glee Club, to feel the gratitude in my heart that I have for each of them. Um, the second thing that comes to my mind is that you know, this is not about me. This is about these students and their, the story of their perseverance and their remarkable care and commitment to one another. And I just feel like I got to cheer that on. That was my job, it was just to 
be a source of, of encouragement and, and to share my, my heart and my passion with them and, and to make sure that they knew that they are, that they are loved, you know? And I think uh, that's kind of what, what we need in the world. <laughs> it's just to make sure that people understand that they are loved for who they are and, uh, and that they don't have to do anything to earn that. Just be them. And I think uh, maybe if, if there are lessons that we can take away from our pandemic life as a Glee Club, it's to embrace that part of who we are even more as we look forward to what we get to do on the other side. Um, just, I think there's something really unique about that invitation that is set before us to say, you know, come as you are. We're going we're gonna to absolutely give you the time of your life you come and be a part of this community. And, and when life is really hard, we're still gonna be here for you, no matter what. Thank you, good night, and go blue! Go blue!